Good morning. One of my former students asked me, Sir, how do you memorize all this mathematics formula that you are teaching us? It seems that every day we have a formula to learn and we need to recall all those previous formula because anytime we might be using them. How do you organize all this formula in your mind? Hmm, I said, that's a good question. How do I organize the formula in my mind? I told him I did not memorize these formulas. Aside from being familiar with some of the basic formula, I derive the other formulas. Because once you see the physical connection, the physical interpretation of this formula, you can easily recall them. You can easily recreate them in your mind. So in this lesson, I'm going to share with you the technique that I'm using in order to remember some of the formula. Specifically, we're going to talk about the volume of a cone versus cylinder and the volume of a pyramid versus prism. So to do that, we are going to start with some activity. So I have here some of the materials that we are going to use. I have some cut out materials and also I have here some amount of rice which we are going to use later. But let's begin first by recalling our lesson on volume. So let's review what a volume is. In the other video, we said that volume is defined as the amount of space an object contains. So if you have this box, if you want to get the volume, we fill this box with cubic units and the number of cubic units is what we call as the volume. So the volume is the amount of space inside a solid object. And we compute for that by counting the number of square units. Generally, if you have a prism like this, where the area of the base at one end and the base on the other end are the same, and the faces are parallel, this face is parallel to the other side. The way to remember the formula for the volume of this is you just get the area of the base, in this case a square, and multiply that by its height. For the prism, the volume of the prism is given by the formula volume equals area of the base times height. So if the base is a square, then this becomes side squared which is the area of the base of a square times the height. If you have a rectangular base, then get the area of that rectangular base, multiply it by the height. Now, what if we have this scenario? I have this cube, which is a prism, because the area of the base here and the base opposite it are equal, and this face is parallel to the opposite face, this face is parallel to the opposite. And I have this pyramid that has the same base area as the cube and the same height as the cube. Is there any relationship between their volumes? So let's do some investigation. I have here a cutout pattern and I'll provide you with the link. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this out here. Let's follow the line. When we interconnect them, we will form a pyramid. This is now a pyramid. The base of this is the same as that, and the height would still be the same. In fact, this cube at my left hand is made up of pyramids like this. So using this, let, let me open up this cube. That's that's one, that's two, and that's three. So what I'm showing you here is that if I have a prism and a pyramid of the same base area and the same height, I need three of this, I need three of this in order to form a cube, in order to form a cube. We now therefore say that if you know the volume of this prism, 
then we already know what is the volume of the pyramid because the volume of the pyramid is always one third of the volume of the prism. So you have a prism, the formula would vary depending upon the base. If the base is a square, this becomes side squared times the height. If the base is a rectangle, then this becomes length times width, which is the area of the base, times the height. But whatever is the base and the height, as long as you have another prism with exactly the same base and the same height, even if it's formed like this, where you can see like a right angle here, as long as the height and the base are the same, then the relationship between the volume of a prism and that pyramid is that the volume of the pyramid is one-third the volume of that prism. Let's have an example. Let's say I have this prism, a rectangular prism, And let's I suppose this is 4 units, this is 3 units, and the height is 2 units. What would be the volume of this? The volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. The base is a rectangle, so the volume is the area of the rectangle, which is length times width, so you have 4 times 3, times the height, the height is 2 units. So we therefore say the volume of this rectangular prism is 4 times 3, 12 times 2 is 24 cubic units. Now, let us suppose we have a pyramid with the same base, a rectangular base. This is also 4 units, this is 3 units, and the height is 2 units. So the height is from the apex perpendicular here. So this is right angle here. So if this is 4, this is 3, and the height is the same, 2 units, this is the height. What is the volume of this rectangular pyramid? The volume would be equal to 1 third, whatever is the volume of this rectangular prism. In that example, it's 24 cubic units. So, one-third of 24 is 8 cubic units. So that is the relationship between the volume of a prism in relation to the volume of a pyramid as long as the area of the base of the prism is equal to the area of the base of the pyramid and their heights are the same. So in the future, whenever you are dealing with a problem about finding the volume of a pyramid, you can always see these connections in your mind and you will always remember that there are three of these pyramids that will form one cube. So this formula now would always be easier to remember than just copying those formula from your book. Now, what if we have this case? We have a cylinder. Of course, the base of the cylinder is circular. And we have this cone with the same area of the base and the same height as the cylinder. What is the relationship between the volume of the cylinder and of this cone. Let's find out. And in this case, I am going to use some amount of rice and I'm going to use a smaller cone and a smaller cylinder. They have the same height and they have the same 
area for the base. I'm going to use this smaller one so we'll not be using a lot of rice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how much volume of rice in the cone would fit in this cylinder. So let's do that. Okay, what do you notice? We need three volumes of rice of this cone in order to fill the cylinder. So the relationship therefore between the volume of this cone and the cylinder when they have the same base and the same height is this is one-third the volume of this cylinder. So let's write down our observation. The volume of the cylinder is equal to the area of the base times the height. But the area of the base is pi r squared because the base is circular. So this becomes pi r squared, that's the base, times the height. And for the cone, is one third. This is one third that of the cylinder. So one third of pi r squared h. So that's the relationship between the two. So once you remember this physical connection of using rice to measure the volume of the cone and the volume of the cylinder, then in the future I'll guarantee you that you will remember this formula because in your mind you can see the connection. So let's see some of the applications of this. Let's say I have this cylinder with a radius of two units let's make it two meters and a height of let's say 10 meters what is the volume of the cylinder so V is equal to pi r squared times the height substitute 3.14 for pi our radius is 2 meters squared and our height is 10 meters 3.14 times 2 squared is 4 m squared is m squared times 10 equals 3.14 times 4 times 10 is 40 meters squared times meter is meters cube and then let's use our calculator to compute 3.14 times 40 we have 125.6 meters cube now if we have a cone of the same base and the same height So this, the radius also is 2 meters and the height also is 10 meters. What is the volume of this cone? So the volume of that cone is 1 third pi r squared h, 1 third of this. But we already computed pi r squared h to be 125.6, so we will just get 1 third of 125.6 meters cube. So using our calculator 125.6 divided by 3 is 41.87 meters cube. So that's the relationship between the volume of a cylinder and at a cone with the same base 
and the same height. The volume of this cone is one-third that of the volume of the cylinder.